Hi, this is Ms. Bahawk. Welcome to the Look Good, Move Well podcast, where you can get fresh ideas for your training, nutrition, and lifestyle to immediately put to use. Listen in with Marcus Philly, the creator of Functional Bodybuilding, and myself. Hi, I'm Marcus Philly, and we're broadcasting from Revival Strength in San Rafael, California. We'll be talking about avoiding burnout, keeping your passion alive for training, and fueling your body and mind so you can look good, move well now, and for years to come. If your heavy squat is incomplete without one big breath and a weight belt, tune in for some tips on breathing and bracing under different types of contractions. Those of you in Awaken Training Series, getting to that 15 second overhead squat are going to love this one. And for conditioning work, Marcus shares some surprising advice for breathing and building energy during high effort sets that we'd love for you to try out. Okay, all right. Oh, I thought you were waiting for me to say something. No. <laughs> I just realized you were mimicking the topic. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. Um, Super awkward. <laughs> heavy breathing into the microphone. Oh, boy. No, we're talking about breathing. We're talking about breathing as it relates to, um, you know, training, nervous system, energy, uh, f- nervous system frequencies, and then you know maybe talking about breath as it in training how we use our breath to support you know and compress our spine uh like to handle heavier loads basically all things breathing yeah i love this topic because i 100 percent believe in it and um i've experimented with a bunch of different modalities of breathing and talked to some people who like study and research this stuff on end uh and heard their insight as to how it translates to performance and recovery and things like that Mm -hmm. um and then at the same time it reminds me of you know the fbb athlete experience where somebody asked us that question around you know breathing with heavy like these long tempos how do you breathe during uh training and that's something that uh, that question is something I've, I've I remember hearing multiple times now. So this yeah. would be a great chance to get into it. Yeah. Well, let's let's acknowledge that there's a lot of other people out there that are experts in talking about how to use breathing for a variety of different purposes. I know you've interviewed uh, like Brian McKenzie before on your show, and that's he's like you know deep in the in, into the research on this stuff. There's guys like. Laird Hamilton, Wim Hof. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of others that I don't even know about. Plenty of yogis out there that, you know, could teach us a lot about breathing and its benefits and the and spiritual practice. And so we're not here. I'm I don't I'm not here to try and dive into that. Uh, what what I think we can offer is, hey, from a functional bodybuilding training perspective, from you know the functional fitness community from uh, a competitive athlete in the sport of crossfit how has breath played a role in our lives as coaches and as athletes what have we seen what has worked for our clients um you know where are people wasting their time trying to like you know learn how to breathe perfectly um and uh yeah so we'll just i think there's there's some good topics to speak to um today and and you know to maybe let's kick it off with that question that we got at the at the at the athlete experience which was we were doing a five i think it was a five 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 one tempo um it may have been it may have been a different tempo but we we, you know we classically do this five 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 one tempo in the squat um in awakened training series and we did it in the athlete experience and it's you know if, if you're if this is your first time hearing about that kind of tempo prescription, five, 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 one means five seconds of a lowering phase in the lift, a five second hold at the bottom of the lift, five second on the way up, and then a one second pause at the top to reset. So it's a 15 second time under tension with a one second reset right into the next 15 second repetition. So if you're doing this with like squatting, which is what we did, it was a back squat. Mm-hmm. You know, you're you're basically, you know, squatting for 15 seconds and you get a one second break and then you got to do it again for five reps. 
So it's it, it takes about a minute and 20 seconds to do the full set if you follow the tempo correctly. And any single rep, you know, like I said, it's 15 seconds. So, you know, what where the question I think stemmed from was uh, somebody who's participating who's been taught well, when you squat, you hold your breath and then you breathe out on the way up. So he was having to hold his breath for 10 seconds, five on the way down, five seconds in the hole, and then breathing out for five seconds on the way up, and then one second to reset his breath. And I think he was just getting like completely gassed. Like there's just like he couldn't get enough oxygen and CO2 exchange. And he was like just confused. He's like, how do I do this? Um, and so what, you know, what kind of came up for me was like, well, what are you trying to accomplish right now? You know, like, what are the loads that you're lifting? Um, what's the purpose of holding your breath during a, a contraction? What does that allow you to do? And then, you know, what's the recipe for high time under tension breathing? Um, so it, it got it got a pretty cool conversation started with uh, with these, you know, participants. Totally. And if you've ever been through awakened training series you might be wondering the same thing where it's like okay, even a three two x one like let's say a back squat uh that tempo is something where you're like if you realistically held your breath for the descent and you held it in the bottom and you held it for coming out and you only you know you only breathe after the sticking point you would you would be red in the face if you're doing that totally. for multiple reps like totally. you would get super lightheaded and probably would not be uh, as productive as it could be. So I think you had a really good answer, you know, to that question in that context of 5551. Five, uh, you know, you were basically talking about um, learning how to breathe while still maintaining trunk control or spinal stability. Yeah. Yeah. My, I think what I, what I realized when I started having these high time under tension training sets in my own training was that <clears throat> I didn't actually know how to stabilize my own self. I was relying on breathing and a weight belt to do all the work for me. You know, I tighten up that belt as hard as I could. I take a giant breath <gasps> and then I just push against the belt. You know, I was like creating all this intra abdominal pressure through some heavy, like some big chest breath and then just kind of pressing into a belt and then just trying to squat heavy or deadlift heavy. And uh, I think one, I mean, there's so many things about Awaken Training Series and our some of our designs that people can learn, the nuances that people can learn from. One of them is this concept. It is when I actually start to move slowly through ranges of motion, when I change the way I'm contracting the muscles, because like contracting a muscle fast and contracting a muscle slow is a very different result in terms of what it does to your body. So we're talking about slow contractions, right? We're talking about 16 second contraction of the muscle or, and, and what we get is there's, you know, all the other things that you've built up in your brain about how you stabilize and how you control, you know, when holding your breath, get maximum force production, et cetera, like it just literally goes out the window. You find out quickly that it doesn't work. And so what do you have to do? You have to start relearning principles of like how do I how do I hold tension? How do I brace my abdomen? How do I engage my, you know, my lats? and my my rib muscles and my obliques and my you know I'm as I'm saying this I'm like doing the movements with my body <laughs> <laughs> but how do I do that and, and have a conversation or talk or breathe right cuz I'm I'm contracting all that stuff right now and I'm talking to you you know I mean I don't want to say it's because I learned how to do 5551 five, squats but there's a it's, it helps you know I'm able to you know, when I'm doing slow tempo work, like I, I learned through trial and error that, you know, like a, a heavy front squat at like a three, two X one tempo, right? Not too many things harder in, in tempo squat training because you got this heavy weight pressing on your, on your like throat pressure, pressure on your chest on your on your, you know, thoracic cavity where you're trying to like fill up with, you know, air. Um, then I learned that like, I got to breathe while I'm going down. 
I gotta breathe at the bottom. I have to like re like take another breath at the bottom, hold it to come up, and then I gotta exhale on the way up. And then I gotta reset quickly. So there's like three or four breaths that happen in one repetition. Mm -hmm. And that actually gave me the best chance at holding good position, maintaining like, you know, good blood pressure so that I wouldn't like pass out or I, I could stay focused. And it just taught me how to keep things tight and engaged and engage different muscles while, you know, I was basically getting oxygen, CO2 in and out. And uh, I would say that there's, the, there's a huge carryover that I feel in my training. You know, it's like, moving slowly allows you to focus on different things but then having to breathe and and breathe in and out while you're lifting something moderately heavy through a big range of motion it also teaches you how to connect with your muscles and contract muscles while you're changing pressure inside your abdominal cavity while the tension and pressure around your spine is going you know up and down and uh, those are, you know, again, it's like I only knew one way to squat before. It was like strap a tight belt up and then take a deep breath and go for it. And now it's like I've got, I've got kind of tools so that when I go to lift something heavy and it's not, t- it's not like a slow tempo and I'm just lifting fast, I'm actually recruiting a lot more muscle and core abdominal, you know, muscle tissue than I ever was before because I was forced to do it in a in a slower, you know, controlled setting. Um, so, you know, it's like there's there is no recipe for how to breathe in a situation like that. You have to do it, and you have to also just acknowledge and accept that breathing is part of is going to be part of your working sets. Like you're going to have to breathe a number of times, and that maybe that means you're going to have to go down in weights considerably. Because not only is like it hard to do 120 seconds of squatting, but it's also unfamiliar to you. You don't know how to brace correctly, so you're gonna have to lower loads in order to base it in order to achieve correct breathing. Um, but the learning curve is fast, and it's such a worthwhile, you know, process to go through for for anybody in training and in certainly in you know performance-based training you want to like lift big weights it's like go way down and slow it way down and learn how to contract your muscles under a lot of control and then breathe with that totally i think um you know it's a completely different pattern but think about something like a bent hollow hold or like a a hollow hold in general and you're holding it for 20 30 seconds maybe even an l sit for example it's like you you can't hold your breath that long but you need to keep your core very engaged and potentially other muscles in your body too but you have to learn how to take sips of air throughout that duration yeah. um, to kind of get through it and, yeah. and to get the most out of it. So similarly, same thing comes back here with a back squat and I'm sure a variety of other movements as well. Um, so yeah, I think the one you said, you said you take a couple sips of air in the 3-2-X-1. I just had 3-2-X-1 front squat the other day. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking of what I did. And for me, like I hold my breath for the whole descent for the three seconds, but I have to breathe at the bottom. So it's like a sip of air but still staying braced. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe like you said, another sip of air before maybe coming out. Mm -hmm. Um, And if I can't do that, like if I can't do that effectively or I feel like I don't have control in the bottom, which you will feel if like, if you go to take a sip of air and you automatically just like kind of collapse a little bit, chances are you're going a little too heavy And, and you don't have to, to reap the benefits of what it's actually there for. Totally. Totally. Well, I want to I want to just touch on one thing you said, and then we can switch gears to talking about maybe breathing and like some of the other types of training that we do, and mm-hmm. then also as like a recovery tool or you know. Um, but you mentioned you know bent hollow holds and hollow holds and L sits, and you know I think there's kind of two two ways that we can we get people to approach understanding how to breathe. I mean, we're big fans of isometric contractions. That's what you were kind of referring to. It's like a hollow hold, a plank, a bridge, any of those things that's isometric, you're not moving. And that's, again, another great reason to have them in your training is to learn how to breathe while contracting everything around a static position. Mm-hmm. What, what, and one where one place I've found it to be the most uh, useful and the 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 hardest for people is put a, a isometric contraction 
into a conditioning piece for somebody. Let them run, let them jump on a box, let them do burpees, swing a kettlebell, and then hold a hollow position. They, they're breathing like crazy, you know, because they're, they're winded from what else they're doing, and then they have to stop and then tighten up everything and then keep that breathing going. So really good l- lessons learned in that respect. And then the other type of contraction we were talking about is, you know, eccentric, concentric contractions in like the super slow, long time under tension um, working sets. And I think both, you know, they're both places that we need to encourage our clients to kind of tackle. And, you know, of course, like Awaken Training Series is sort of the roadmap to go and learn some of those lessons you know and then additionally it's like these are the thoughts that we put into our individual you know coaching designs when we work with clients like you know don't worry about ever doing another boring workout again we got so many tools to improve your connection to fitness to give you long life lessons of learning through training that you could keep doing this for a very long time and continue to progress and learn because we're going to hit you with every you know so many different ways of like you know enhancing your fitness awareness and knowledge yeah i uh i think that the isometric contractions are huge especially if you can figure out a way to do it consciously right so there's there's a difference between like you said a 45 second wall sit just prescribe that way versus like hey consciously contract or squeeze everything you can here it feels totally different yeah. 45 seconds of trying to squeeze your core uh keep your quads engaged all of that purposefully feels a lot harder versus like all right i'm just gonna hang out here for 45 seconds yeah so um yeah i think there's a lot of value there to learn this coordination i think the last thing i want to say on this this part is like that basically what we were referring to with that big hold of the breath and then like going down into the bottom of a squat is like the Valsalva maneuver, yeah. right? So I think there's, there's two scenarios I think of where it's like you just wanna be a little watchful uh, if, of using that technique in the first place is, um, I think one is if you're pregnant, right? And two is if you have a heart condition, a pre-existing heart condition of some sort. Mm-hmm. Um, like figure, dig a little deeper into that and make sure that that's something you can do because over time there's, um, it can have adverse effects if that's like, if you're using that with heavy deadlifts and heavy squats. Yeah. And then the other breakthrough is like, that's not the only way you have to do it, right? There's yeah. this way we're totally. talking about right now and you can still get a lot of benefit. Yeah, totally. And I mean, you know, disclaimer, we're not medical professionals. We're not here to tell you like, this is medically safe or unsafe for you to do. It's just sort of a suggestion to be like, okay, this Valsalva maneuver was designed to give people maximum force production potential in maybe their lifting. If you're, you know, ask yourself if that's the goal of your, you know, training, you know, if you're in a look good, move well environment, then there's other ways to do it. We've already talked about them. So, you know, you can breathe when you're going down and up. You can take, you know, you can, you can learn how to brace yourself without just a massive inhalation of air. Um, Yeah. And I also learned from experience that like, I don't do well with that. I end up passing out when I front squat and I mm-hmm. try and do that. So I had to learn a new way and, you know, I experimented through these methods and it was really effective for me. Awesome. Well, the next area was the other scenarios that this breathing might kind of come into play. Mm-hmm. Um, what were you thinking? Were you thinking conditioning? Uh, yeah, I was thinking kind of conditioning. I was thinking really this like, you know, miss and it's another topic that came up in the athlete experience we were doing um we were doing like a functional bodybuilding conditioning piece right and really what what made it such is some of the movements that we chose right um but also just sort of this idea of like work rest a little bit of control and then maintaining you know sustainable effort grinding your way through kind of some of these fbb type lifts um and i kind of gave you know I gave sort of the, what's the recipe for best recovery? Like if I got 60 seconds of work and 30 seconds of rest and 60 seconds of work and 30 seconds of rest, like what do I do during that rest period? And a mistake I see people making often is that they're like, they're forced, they're trying to force their breathing to slow down. It's like, (sighs) okay, rest. And then they go, 
you know, they, 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 there's like, their maybe their respiration rate is like 60, 70 a minute, and then it's rest period, so they try and calm everything down. Slow it down, slow it down, right? Like that, like slowing down the breathing is gonna make it feel less hard, and it's gonna make you feel like you're in more control. And, um, you know, like, oh, I'm just trying to get my heart rate to come down. I'm like, but why? Like, you're, you, f- you gotta find that heart rate, you gotta find that respiration rate that allows you to hum and move. And remember, like, the oxygen that you're breathing in and the CO2 that you're breathing out, that's, that's nutrients that are coming in and waste products that are leaving. And then your heart is pumping that around your body. So you want to keep that going. That's what's going to make you feel fresh. You know, you can take 30 breaths in a rest period versus five. You got a lot better chance of exchanging oxygen and CO2. So I was kind of like, I, I acted out like kind of a... <laughs> what I look like when I'm taking rest here at the gym, you know, and it's like in between my sets, like I'm pacing around the gym and I'm like, (sighs) you know, like I'm, I'm breathing like probably more, more than I need to, but purposely trying to get that, you know, exchange of, you know, air. And, um, so that's kind of like a, a, maybe a, for some people listening, that's a different approach to kind of what they've, you know, what they've done in the past. Like, if they're in a in a a workout that you know typical like let's say a chip or something like that they do a bunch of kettlebell swings they put it down they got to take a rest and so they're like they're trying to like slow their breathing down to like get control so they can go back to the next round of kettlebell swings it's like well, what about doing your swings putting it down and then breathing you know you're still in control you're you're controlling the rate of breathing but keep it up keep it high get some of that O2 in, get some of that CO2 out. I I would, I almost guarantee you're going to be able to approach that kettlebell faster than if you try and slow it down, right? Because now your muscles have gotten more oxygen to them. They've gotten rid of waste products and they're like ready to go. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I never really, um, thought about that because I probably do something similar when I'm, uh, when I have rest periods is try to get it to kind of come down. But it's like, if you keep it revving that high, when you jump back in, you can kind of, you know, bounce into whatever your rhythm is versus spending an extra 10, 20 seconds getting back up there. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I remember hearing, I mean, James Fitzgerald, you know, taught me a lot about that when I was starting coaching with him early on. <laughs> um, but somebody else, you know, recently, like I was listening to a podcast in the last couple of years with Wim Hof and he's not like a runner, you know, he's more of known for his like, you know, cold exposure feats and, Um, but you know, he basically is like this, this breather. He uses his breath to like allow him to do really, really amazing things. And one of which is like, he went out and ran like a marathon in like the, a desert in Africa, barefoot or some, you know, something crazy. Like it was 130 degrees out or, you know, like, uh, he didn't drink any water and it was like, you know, he does, he like hikes up these, you know, big mountains in the snow barefoot and, uh, you know, in shorts and no shirt and, you know, and what he always talks about is like when he's doing it, he's like huffing and puffing. Like he's just like, that's the only thing he's going to focus on for the whole time. (sighs) He's not going super fast. He's not doing it because he's exhausted. He's doing it because he can control so much of what's happening physiologically through his breath and through getting oxygen in and oxygenating his blood and sending that nutrient to all the parts of his body that he wants working at maximum ability. So I, I recall like after hearing that, that, like there was one morning in the gym that followed that I was doing, you know, some pretty high effort aerobic power work that was, you know, pushing my ability. And all I did, like I was definitely uh, like near threshold. And the only way I got through it was I was just like, I'm going to breathe like crazy for the next 40 minutes. It was like 20 minutes or 18 minutes of intervals with rest. So the, the whole thing was 40 minutes long. But I was just like, I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna, this is how I'm going to get through this. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, it, like, it worked like a charm. And you know, it, was just, it was just confirmation that's like, yeah, this is, this is your tool, right? right. You don't have like, you know, you don't, you're not sipping Gatorade. You're not getting energy from like food. Like, you're getting energy and life force from the freaking air that's in your in your space so breathe it in and get it out 
and do it often and stop trying to slow it down. And, you know, there's other ways to control your effort that don't include breathing. You know, learn to pace yourself. Learn what your limits are. You know, choose sets that allow you to go, you know, unbroken uh, for periods of time. You know, pick a pace on the rower or the bike that suits you, that isn't just like super crazy fast. Like, you learn how to pace that way. Don't pace your breathing. You know, let your breathing match the effort that you're that you're bringing. Keep it up. Yeah, I I would love to hear, um, you know, if people try this out, like what what differences they note in their conditioning pieces. Yeah, because um, it could be a cool experiment. Oh, totally, totally. Yeah, I mean, maybe we could just leave it at that. And you know, in these two areas of lifting and in conditioning. You know, take some of these uh, suggestions and um, go and practice them. And then we'd love to hear your feedback on how it went. Yeah, head over to speakpipe.com forward slash look good, move well. Yeah, or hit us on a DM. Slide into the DMs. Yeah. Mizba loves a DM. <laughs> thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, thanks for listening. <laughs>